All right, I want to run through just sort of a, a summary of what your thought process should be when you're asked to either find zeros of a polynomial or, um, or like solve an equation involving a polynomial because they tend to involve the same, the same process. So when you have to find the zeros of a polynomial, the first thing you want to think about is, can I factor this? Because when you factor a polynomial, it's really easy to see the zeros. That's why we like factored form very much. So let's look at example one. Can I factor this? That's the first thing you ask. And the answer is yes. And the technique you use first here is you can take out a GCF. So let's say we can take out a 2, 2 out of each of these and an x. So 2x. And then what's left behind is a x squared minus a 2x minus 15. Okay, but we're not really done factoring. We're done with this piece. That's 2x. And that means I can factor this piece here by using the sort of like reverse FOIL here, and that's a 5, and that's a 3, and that's a minus, and that's a plus. So now that it's factored, and again, make sure you answer the right question. We have to find the zeros. So the zeros are well, this factor here, right? You said 2x equal to 0. That means x equals 0. Students missed that one a lot. All right, there's a 0 there. 0. 0 is the 0 that you plug in to that term to get a zero. A lot of zeros in that statement, but uh, and negative three and a five. Okay, so there you go. Let's look at the next one. Can we factor this? So you may think, well, maybe we can't because it, I mean, it's a degree three and we can't take out a GCF. But we did learn a type of factoring called factoring by grouping. So let's see if that works. Let's put parentheses around these. I'm going to put, make this a plus and that a minus adding negative 10x. And I, let's see, what can I take out of this? I can take out an x squared, and what's left is a 2x plus 1. And I can take out of this a negative 5, and I'm left with a 2x plus 1. And this is good. This is good news. We want this to happen. We want these to be the same to do factoring by grouping. So that means this turns into x squared minus 5 times 2x plus 1. Okay, now at this point we can get this, so I'm going to put the list of the zeros over here. Uh, this term, right, the zero associated that with that is negative a half. And then this guy here, I can't factor that, but if I want to know what the zeros are, I want to set this, I can set this piece equal to zero. And if you do a little algebra, that means x squared equals five, and you square root, and you get x equals plus or minus root five. So those are my other two zeros. Okay, so there's, I mean, that didn't take so, that's not so bad, right? That's factoring. First thing you look for is can I factor, and then you find the zeros that way. If you don't have a calculator, the other thing you can use is the rational roots theorem to get a zero and then use synthetic division. So I'm going to say C previous video for this example, because I'm not going to redo one until they take too long. Okay, that, that, that would be the next thing, step. It takes a little longer because you've got to generate that list of possible zeros. That's if you can't factor by any means. And then lastly, if you have a calculator on you, then you and you know you're looking at something you clearly can't factor, then you go to your calculator and you graph it and find a few zeros. So I did that. Here's my uh, my function. I put in the calculator. I hit graph, and then it looks like there's a zero here and here. So I calculate them. So I got one at negative two, and the other one looks like it's at looks like it's at three. Just to double check, it's at three. So the two zeros I see in the calculator 
are negative 2 and 3. Now, how do I get the rest? Because there should be four of them. There should be four. Um, well, I'm going to do synthetic division. I'm going to put the 3 in the box, one of the zeros. I'm going to write out my coefficients. And I get, uh, let's see, 1. And I know this has to be a 0, because zero, 3 is a 0. So this gives 3, 2, 6, 2, 6, 4, 12. Now, what this member, if you dec decode this, it means x to the fourth minus x cubed, this polynomial equals x minus 3 times this here. So I'm, I'm just going to write that. That's what that means. It means x. Uh, means that equals x minus 3 times x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 4. But then we used, we used, uh, we found two zeros, and I divided by, by uh, x minus 3 to get this, but negative 2 was also a 0, so I can, I can divide by x plus 2 as well, and it should go into this thing evenly. So what I can do, and this, this may look silly, but it obviously should work. I'm going to put a negative 2 in the box and continue on this piece. Bring down the 1, negative 2, and I should get a 0 here for the remainder. 0, multiply, you get 0, you get a 2, multiply, you get a negative 4, and of course we get 0. So what this means, this piece here means that this can divide up into, so I'm factoring this whole thing, it gets you know, x minus 3, and because negative 2 as a, is a 0 of the polynomial, and I just did synthetic division on this piece here, it means that this can factor now into x plus 2 times x squared plus 2. And so now I know my zeros are 3, uh, 3 and negative 2, we already knew those, but the other two come from here. And x squared plus 2 equals 0 means that x squared equals negative 2, which means x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2, which is plus or minus i root 2. So the other two zeros are imaginary, which, ex which explains why when I looked on the calculator, I didn't see them, or right? I didn't see any more. But that process, notice that process all started with a calculator and then some synthetic division. We can get all our zeros, uh, get all our zeros that way. Okay, so there it is. There's like a nice kind of summary of your thought process. Again, if you don't have a calculator, you can't do this method. And, um, you know, so you have to use the techniques that we explained in the last two slides. But if you do have a calculator, this is how you, this is how you end up finding all the zeros, uh, including imaginary ones.